you a little bit of the purge and I'm bring you guys a vlog. Uh, hello, it's been a while. Um, I just got back from Christmas break. Uh, I went to Wisconsin to visit my parents and my uh, other my my dad's side of the family basically, um, and had a really nice time. Uh, so I haven't streamed in a while. Haven't made uh, videos in a bit, but I just wanted to do a vlog. I'm super super overdue based on Patreon rewards. So I thought I would uh, cover a lot of the general. Um, questions and just give you guys an update on what I've been up to uh, more or less uh, more detailed than the last two months if you guys watch the entirety of my streams I usually talk about stuff like this a little bit more often but I'm not very good at putting it in a little condensed video to share so that everybody can see it's more like in between games kind of a thing I'll talk about my life and stuff so with that said uh, let me give you guys an overview of what I've been up to like the last two months um, number one my mustache is gone rest in peace uh, I'm sure that was the most shocking thing you saw and we'll see this video. Um, but in terms of recent stuff, I went to Colorado for Midas mode. Um, the reception was extremely good. Um, there were definitely some negatives though. The balance was kind of bad. That's kind of on me, mostly. Um, it's very hard to design a game mode, um, especially because what I think, the way I think the game should be played is not always how players play it, uh, which I'm sure any um, beta testers or, or ice frogs that watch this video are gonna be able to laugh and cackle and uh, relate. Um, you know, basically like the way you design the game isn't how it always works out. And, um, sometimes they don't like the teams randomed when they didn't need to, because they just wanted to make money to collect money, even though they knew they had more than enough. So it was like, they kind of weren't playing the mode, which was frustrating sometimes. Uh, but as a whole, Midas mode went really well. Um, kind of unsure how we'll solve all of the issues next time. Cause basically your, your problems are this, right? Like everybody has a bank that they have to spend money, but you have to refill the money in some ways. And how do you refill the money? Um, if it's only based on winning, then the teams that are losing too much will become more and more likely to lose towards the end. And if you do it based on something like more money per series, and it's less interesting because then the whole banks don't really like carry over in the long term. And the way to get money from challenges is a good option, but there's a lot of, some players don't like the challenges. Uh, seems like a moderate amount of them really dislike the challenges. They'd prefer to have the drafting aspect. And the viewers love the challenges. They love to see pro players doing dumb things or typing things or interacting. So it's like this weird balancing where like you have to figure out what's the right amount of money to get pro challenges. How do you make challenges that don't suck that the teams want to do? How do you make those interesting and different enough that players and viewers like like watching it and like seeing the updates? Like there were some days where challenges were heavily done and other days where they were barely touched or... Some teams just didn't touch them. So it's really hard to balance. And I feel like if there was no need for viewership in mind, I would design Minus Mode to not have challenges be done in weird ways like random shit in game that's bizarre. Um, but I think you kind of have to for the for the good of viewership. So I don't know, we'll see how that stuff turns out in the future when we um, work on Minus Mode too. Sorry if that's loud. Uh, but you know, it's not going to be, it's going to be many months, I think until the next one comes out, but, um, as a whole pleased with how it went, but it was definitely a lot more work than a normal tournament because our work day would be broadcasting the whole day. And then afterwards we'd have to sit and plan challenges for the next day and balance the, and tweak the mode if needed. So it was kind of a lot of work, but, um, it was very good. Very happy with the reception. So that was Midas mode. I think that was uh, around Thanksgiving, which is about a month ago now. And then after that, I had about two to three weeks before I flew to um, Christmas stuff. Um, and um, those couple weeks were mostly just did a little day nine show, streamed a bunch, made some videos, um, working on guide stuff. So uh, the other Learn Dota update is probably something you guys are very curious about. It's been a long time since I launched my Patreon. It's probably been, I think we launched it right before TI, so about July, something like that. Um, so one of the, the big challenge basically that was hit, well, first of all, I haven't been very good about fulfilling challenges. Um, number one, I haven't been vlogging monthly. This one is probably two months overdue. Um, I have not been good about keeping the, uh, the welcome to you suck guide up to date. Um, I finally found, well, I didn't, I didn't do a good job looking for this, but, um, uh, I'm going to pay a guy to one of, one of my subs who's uh, done guide editing in the past. He's going to, um, update the guide to all of the updates for, um, terms and, things that are wrong, like bounty runes give X gold and experience at start, and now they don't give experience. There's a lot of little things like that that change every patch and kind of mess it up. Um, gonna have him working on that. So working on that one at least. I don't think I've been good on weekly replay commentaries. I think I've really slacked on replay commentaries, mostly for various reasons that I'll, I'll cover that in a little bit so I don't get off topic. Um, and then 
the big one is the Learn Dota Guide, basically. Um, Learn Dota Guide uh, video series is, I, I would say, is safe to say it's behind, but I think we're we're on a good we're in a good position right now. So where we are currently, um, to talk a little bit about how the Learn Dota Guide is supposed to work or video series is supposed to work, we're basically going to take the lesson plans that I planned out for day nine, which is like it's like fifteen ish topics of various things that once you read and learn all of the topics, you should have a pretty good understanding of. Dota strategy as a whole, kind of understanding why things are the way they are. doesn't mean you're going to be amazing at Dota, but it definitely means that your framing around how to think about Dota should be better. You're going to better be able to answer questions like, what should I do right now? For example, you could think of, oh, I'm supposed to do this thing that Purge explained. Like, oh, I'm supposed to push lanes that way the creeps at the towers and it shows where my opponents are, and then I can use that information to do something. Like, oh, I shouldn't jungle, I should push lanes, you know, stuff like that. Um, but to do so, um, it kind of gets into the typical problems that I incur or encountered when I rewrote the Welcome Dota You Suck Guide. Originally, when I wrote the Welcome Dota You Suck Guide, everybody sucked at Dota in, on average because it was in Warcraft 3. You join a custom game. The people playing those custom games maybe didn't play Dota ever before, so they would join a random game, and then the game would kind of be a shit show because some players would be like on their first couple games in Dota, didn't know what to buy. And the resources of how to learn how to play the game were worse. Um, like the, there weren't people like streaming wasn't a thing then, like Justin TV existed, but there was almost nobody that streamed on Justin TV. I think I was usually when I used to stream on Justin TV Dota, I think there'd be like four people streaming. If you guys can imagine that, like literally four people at a time streaming Dota. And now there's hundreds of people on Twitch that stream. So back then it was very difficult to learn how to play. That's why I wanted to show people like show my perspective when you playing the game. If you watch replays, you can watch player perspective. There's just a lot of things that were hard uh, to learn Dota. So back then it was, the guide was like a lot of like basics, like this is how attributes work. Um, this is how much mana regen Basilius gives you compared to Voidstone. The, you shouldn't buy Vlad's on Agility Heroes as the first item because you don't have much uh, damage and stats at that point. It's not very good and it was bad at the time, but overdone. So there's a lot of like things like that. But then w when you want to go more detailed and kind of give everybody all the stuff, all the information, then the, the guides become kind of bogged down and long. And then the, the solution is, okay, well, I need to include everything, but how do I include the framing? Because if you start teaching somebody something and I say, where do I start teaching somebody about Dota? You could say like, here's your regular Dota game and this is what you need to learn about every point as you go through. Or it could be something like, hey, let's do categories like resources or uh, uh, collecting gold or this is experience. You know, there's so many like different topics and then those become kind of bloated and then you, you think like, where do I put these in the order? Um, and the... What I did for the rewrite of Welcome to Dota You Suck, which was about two, three years ago now, um, this is when I moved back to California, is when I rewrote it uh, from Korea. I made it so it was kind of like a flowing explanation from simple things to more basic things or advanced things. And as important topics came up, I would delve into those for a bit. But it's kind of, the organization is kind of weird and it's way too long, I feel, and it's too dense. So the purpose of the Learn Dota series is to cut out all that denseness. But to do so, like I just explained, it gets a little bit messy. So our solutions that we're going with that hopefully work out as beautifully as we're thinking they might, um, we have a basic series, and this is going to be the absolute basics of the video of the of the game. So it'll be really simple stuff like this is these are the three resources: it's gold, experience, towers, and time. I guess is the fourth, um, and then it'll be things like. Here's another video where it's like, hey, this is the map. This is how vision works. This is how high ground vision works. This is how unobstructed vision works. It's like super simple things. This is how wards work. This is how far hero see. There's stuff that's in important and interesting, and some of you guys might not know it, but generally it's like super simple explanations. Some of those got too bloated when I wrote them, and I think we wrote that we we uh, what's it called? Um, Outlined about 10 of those, and we've written the scripts for nine now. Um, I think four of them are ready, pretty sure. So the basic series are, are what I wanted to do first, because if somebody comes and wants to learn, obviously they should have the basics first before we get into the more uh, more um, detailed things. And the uh, But there's still stuff in the basics that we're missing. And um, so to solve that problem, when we actually get to the Learn Dota series, if we do the first episode, I'm not going to show in that first episode all the details about how to pull, because... It's important that people know when they should pull, but to learn how to pull, I don't want to put that in the main video because then it bloats the main videos out really kind of in a boring way that everybody that watches those have to be like, oh great, I have to sit through like two minutes of Purge explaining how to pull, or there's a jungling one. I don't want to put that in those videos because then that bloats them out in a more boring way. So I want to tr try to keep the Learn Dota videos really short, like less than 10 minutes of like detailed edited content. Most of the basics videos are like five minutes, I think. Let me check this. 
this, this first one we made, it's about 343. This is that's more of like a this is Dota video, like a here's about everything you need to know in Dota, so that somebody can watch this video and start playing more or less, but not as detailed. Um, but I think most of the other ones are around that, like three to six minutes or something. So the Learn Dota ones should be less than like 10 minutes, and it'll cover various topics and all the really important topics and concepts that people need to learn, like trading. How do you know whether or not you're trading efficiently? Here's some, like, it's, it's just all, a lot of the stuff that I went through with Dana, but they won't be like 60 minutes of me teaching him. It'll just be like condensed good stuff. And if there is like a section where you're like, pulling is really important for X reason, and I show why it's important, then I'm going to be like, hey, if you want to watch more about pulling, like learn how to pull, click this video. And then I'm going to move on. And then you can click that video if you don't know about how to pull correctly. And you can watch that for six minutes or whatever. And then you can see how to pull. And then you can go back to the original video and keep watching it and under and learn the rest of the, the themes. So I kind of I'm kind of like branching stuff a lot. That way I can keep all the good shit in this one good playlist where it's all the information you need to learn the game really well. And if there's other stuff that's on the side and you know it, you don't have to watch it. It'll just be there. And if you do want to watch it, you can go watch those. So that was kind of how we're doing things. So basically, it takes a lot of planning. Um, and, and I've certainly procrastinated a lot. I always procrastinate my life, everything, every aspect of my life. But right now, um, somewhere around four to five of the Dota Basics videos are mostly done. We just might need to like reshoot some things. Um, and then we're about to start scripting out the Learn Dota ones, which should be easier than the Basics because they're basically already done. I made all the... Uh, if you guys are subs or Patreons at the $5 level or above, you should have links to the Google Docs that have, uh, it's one of like the rewards. I don't remember which level it is, but there's um, there are rewards. I think it's at the $10 level maybe, where um, you can get access to all the Google Docs that I use to write up the lesson plans and to teach day nine from. Those are all accessible to you. If So if you guys want to jump a little bit and not wait until the videos come out, you can watch those if you hit the $10 level, I think is what it is. You might want to check the Patreon or the my Twitch page for breakdowns. Um, but just wanted to give you guys an update on that. I know that I'm behind. It's been a while, but it has been. There's been delays and events. Worked TI, worked other events, um, real life stuff sometimes. But um, gonna try to get all, all the scripts done and recorded by the next month, by the end of January. And then Sander will be working on those. Who he's a uh, he's my editor. Um, he's gonna be working on those um, while I'm do daily upkeep stuff. You know, like because I still have to do things like streaming x amount of times a week. Uh, making sure I'm making YouTube videos. Sometimes I have Moonduck stuff or Moonduck meetings or Moonduck events that I have to go do or what the ducks. And all of those things like cut into my free time or my energy and make it harder for me to then go and write like a really boring ass script about warding or how vision works, you know, shit like that. that kind of burns me out. So I just want to give you guys an update. I know that I'm not on time and that is a normal thing for me, but I, at the least I owe it to you guys to be transparent, which I always try to do about how things are going, especially where money is related because it's kind of like a Patreon contract kind of a thing. Speaking of money, um, uh, just again, thanks to the Patreons that have been um, subbing with that goal being hit. Um, I think the, the whole like dollar amount reward thing is feels makes me kind of uncomfortable now, so I'm not really sure what to do with that. I, I temporarily hit it because I don't want to I feel I feel weird about those. Like I'm gonna make the Learn Dota series. I hit the level the first month. It's done. We're gonna make the Learn Dota series, period. Um, but I I don't know. Right now I feel like it's weird to have that be um that that sort of contract to be there, I guess, if that makes sense. I still want to give rewards for like game playing and vote on here stuff that I haven't done a good job at all about doing, but the uh for the future if the if it just keeps going like if the like basically at some point if i complete the learn dota series that 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 goal is gone so it's stupid to have it as like a reward there at a money level because then in some ways people might feel like oh if i help hit that level then this thing should be done maybe you should replace it for something else you know so at some point i think i'm going to wean off like the this is what i'm giving you for the for the subs and that way it's more of like a I will give you some things, but it's more of you being generous, kind of like how Twitch subs have been working for me this whole time. So the reason I brought that up is because uh, one of the other things that we were trying to do with the Learning Dota series was get a sponsor for it because um, I know that it's going to be popular once we're done with it um, because we're working really hard on it and the uh, Day 9 series is popular. So we worked on getting a sponsor for the Learning Dota series. We have one, um, and that's one of the things that were kind of that's slowing us down a bit because um, we could have released some of the Dota Basic videos already, but we need to integrate sponsorship in it and because that way it helps cover the costs. Uh, keep in mind that um, Sander editing these videos costs me a lot of money and obviously the Patreon funds um, will probably cover most of those expenses, but I'll probably be in the red for that. 
I assume for the, for the course of like the 25 videos, like it probably takes them 10 hours to edit a video, for example, minimum, minimum 10. And I, and we have to do like redos and stuff. So basically uh, a sponsorship was always kind of something that was planned to do a sponsorship's ready, but have to do some like refilming of like sponsor integration stuff and things like that, that are making it slightly more complicated. But um, all of that is coming soon. Um, again, don't, don't expect much for the basics videos. If you guys are not, semi new players um, in terms of like content that you're gonna be interested in. But once the Learn Dota series comes out, I'm definitely gonna work hard to promote that and make sure that everybody gets to see it. Um, you know, like tweeting, I don't tweet out my videos very often. It's more like it just is on YouTube, but um, I should do that more probably, but I don't. Anyways, that's kind of how things are going. That's those are the things slowing me down a little bit. Um, I think that kind of covers all the Patreon stuff a little bit. I'll get to questions in a second. What was the other thing that I said I was going to uh, wait to talk about? can't remember i think it was about procrastination which is kind of ironic um i can't remember um anyways uh just went to wisconsin that was a, a very good time um considering moving back to wisconsin finally um i grew up there i lived there until 2012 and then a little bit after ti2 i moved to california the reason being was because i had a youtube i was uh, partnered with maker studios back then and they were based in What's the city? I can't remember, but it's like very west of Los Angeles, like towards closer towards the ocean. And because um, I wanted to, I felt like I was, I left college. I didn't have very many friends in the city where I grew up in. It was a little bit away from college. So I kind of felt like lonely in the middle of nowhere. So I wanted to move to California because then there'd be more like YouTube context, uh, Dota players, Twitch streamers kind of stuff. Um, back then there weren't that many Dota players. There it was just like Blitz and Lumi, I believe that lived there. Maybe a couple other that I think Brax lives, lived there originally, but I, I didn't know him back then. Um, but I moved out there, everything has gone well, I've gone to a bunch of events, I'm kind of like over going to events that aren't Dota related at this point, so I'm kind of ready to move back to somewhere where it's uh, less expensive and cold sometimes and things like that. We're not quite settled on, we're not, it's not like a 100% thing yet, but um, timeline is probably gonna be in about six months in June, so that's kind of like a personal life update thing. Uh, so things will probably get messy around June, but the Learn Dota series should easily be done by then. Um, so hopefully it won't interrupt anything too much. Um, still feel bad because I don't stream enough, so apologies about that. Um, other than that, uh, can talk about Captain's Draft now, I think. Captain's Draft is very, very soon. So if you guys are watching this maybe on New Year's Day, the 1st of January, you have only a couple of days to watch uh, until, you have to, until you can watch. Um, if you guys live close to DC, I really recommend coming to check out the tournament. Um, it is at... I don't know, but I know it's in Washington, D.C. Um, it is, uh, we're doing it in combination with Events D.C. It is a Dota 2 minor, so the teams that participate and win will get uh, points, qualifying points, I don't know what they're called, TI points or whatever, to qualify for TI. So it's not a lot of points, it's only a minor, um, but we're very excited about the tournament. Um, I have not been involved with planning it almost at all. It's almost all been like Sunsfan and uh, Sajdeen and um, some other Moonduck people and the Events D.C. people, but um, I'm sure it's going to be great. It's going to be Moonduck. Uh, I think the only non-Moonduck people that are there are Jack. Who was the other one? I think there was like one other person, but I can't remember. Uh, Cinderin is able to make this, so he'll be there too. And that wasn't the person I was thinking of, of course, because he's a Moonduck. But I um, can't remember who the other person is. Someday I'll remember, maybe. Uh, but it'll be a great time. Uh, feel free to, if you guys live nearby, I'd love it if you guys end up going. Um, don't know what the, the venue will be like. I do know, I know it doesn't have very much backstage areas, but that's about it. Don't know much else. So, but it will be fun. Excited to go. Uh, but I'm leaving in two days for that. So on the second, I think the morning of the second. Yeah, that's it. So basically when you see this video, I only have like 24 hours until I have to leave again. Uh, I've only been home for like four days. So going to that, it's a uh, four days, one day broadcast, three days in land. So if you guys want to go, you can buy a three day pass or a one day pass. Um, there's links on uh, the, if you go to the Moonduck TV, Twitter, there's lots of links for those. Um, I've retweeted a couple of the posts as well. So um, maybe it might be a little bit last minute for hotel purchases. I don't know if there's hotels available or not. Um, but um, if you live local, feel free to check out the land. It should be, for, should be a really good time. And I believe it's the only land that's going to be in the U.S. other than potentially TI this year. or may, Unless uh, there's some lands in NA after TI for the new season. I'm not sure if there will be. So that is Captain's Draft stuff. I definitely should have told you guys about this earlier. Sorry, I didn't vlog about this. I should have vlogged about it like a month ago when tickets got released. It was when I was in Colorado for um, Midas Mode that we found out that tickets went on, started going on sale. So did a shitty job. I, I like retweeted stuff, but I never um, talked to you guys enough about it. 
So that's going on. If you guys want to come say hi as well. I mean, obviously, I'll be at the lane. So feel free to say hi if you see me there. Okay, so that's DC stuff. Um, and other than that, uh, really just the Learn Dota series is the is the big the big um, project that's on the docket for me. Um, have some other stuff coming up, but it's nothing really worth uh, talking about too much. Oh, I finally watched that episode of Bull that I was on. Oh yeah, that's the other thing I can talk about. Um, uh, uh, after the Bull thing, Bull was the uh, the TV show in um, on CBS, which is a North American uh, TV channel, I believe. Um, it was the one that I was in, and I finally watched the episode. I never watched it. I watched like the previews for it, and I was only barely in it, but I watched the actual episode. My parents had recorded it when I was at their house. He's like, oh, we have that episode that you're on. I'd never seen the full thing. I watched it. It was actually, it was very good, I thought. Um, uh, when I when I first got approached, I got to read the script, and um, I uh, there were some like things that I thought should be slightly changed because it like slightly misrepresented gamers in a way that was kind of like your it's kind of like if your dad explains how gaming culture works that it's a little bit wrong. So I gave some I, I offered to uh, give some like tips to for for script adjustments and um, they uh, got me in contact with the writer and I he he took he, he received my email basically and uh, took my feedback and when I watched the episode this was like the first way that I could tell that he really did. Um, uh, make a lot of nice concessions he did it like honestly the uh the, the episode was really good i was very surprised uh, it's very different seeing it compared to reading it when you read it it's very easy to like put your opinion of what it's going to look like on it but when you actually see the episode like it was very it was very obvious when i went there that they did i know that like they it's a huge huge industry in, in the sense that like you show up to where they're doing the the interviews and it's like this giant warehouse where they have sets built inside and they have like warehouse rooms full of just like lamps they have like a giant shelf full of all these different kinds of lamps and they just so they just go in there and grab random lamps and put them on the shelf on on a set so that when they build a set they don't have to rebuy lamps you know it's like the the amount of money and the professionalism that they have in the industry is amazing so just seeing like the script to seeing what i saw from the script in december to seeing the episode is amazing like it's it's very clear how um how experienced they are what they're doing it's very cool and uh, so that was pretty interesting. Also, I recently got a bunch of checks in the mail that were royalty checks. That was pretty fucking cool. I had no idea I was getting royalty checks for the show, but I literally got royalty checks for the show. So the amount that I got paid originally, I won't tell you how much it is, but the royalty checks that I received was more than more than doubled my earnings from the from the show so far. And it wasn't a lot. Like it wasn't a shitload of money by any means. It was a pretty small. It was like less than working an event. But it was the royalties were pretty cool. It was just cool to see like, oh, this was already built into the contract. I didn't have to ask for it. It, it shows you how how strong their unions are in uh, TV and film. So I thought that was kind of cool, and uh, it's very pleasant to get. It's like, oh, free money. Okay, cool. I'll take that. Thanks, man. So um, episode was good. Um, they they it was not glaringly negative or bad for gamer. Like the most implausible thing that happened in the episode was the uh, esport owner basically accused his player of throwing like the day after it happened he didn't do it internally which would basically never happen it would be like the end of that business maybe not the end but you know it's like it was like crazy like the owner of eg was like uh sumail you threw this game and accused him publicly it's like they would never do that they'd fire him they wouldn't say anything you know um is what would happen so because it'd be too much negative blowback for their team their team well, their brand would get too much blowback so that was like the most implausible thing but considering that's like the whole um purpose of the the show uh the episode um it kind of had to be included so but they, I thought they did a really good job. Uh, the the main actor, I met him at the event uh, for filming, and he was he was very nice. Um, he asked a couple questions. He said he watched a bunch of like esports documentaries that were recommended to him, and uh, that's how. But I thought he did a good job. I'm obviously not good at acting, but uh, so maybe I shouldn't be uh, <laughs> giving you guys my opinion about that part. But um, I was really pleased with the episode. Um, they did a great job. So it's kind of nice to watch him be like, oh, this is good. This wasn't this wasn't like. It wasn't like bad. I mean, the show had like mediocre radiance, but I thought the episode was actually better than the overall radiance were. Okay. Uh, with that said, I'm also on another show now. Uh, it's uh, some Hulu show. I believe it's called... My dog is grinning over here, probably because I'm making too much noise and she's trying to sleep. <laughs> I believe it's called Hulu's Defining Moments, I believe. Um, I did the filming for that one a couple weeks ago. Uh, I think early December, maybe early November. I can't remember. Um, but I think that's watchable. If you guys have Hulu, uh, you should be able to watch it. I think it's called the finding moments. Um, and I filmed on that about various like big Dota moments that happened at like TIs and things like that. Um, kind of, kind of like just explaining 
the circumstances, why it's important, why it was cool, why it was exciting. And for all of those, I was almost all of those. I was there, I believe. So that's why it was kind of cool. Um, so that was kind of random, but kind of fun. It was kind of, it was a little bit, a lot, a lot more low key than, um, the bowl thing, but obviously it was a smaller show. So, um, so that's kind of cool. If you have Hulu, go check that out. Uh, I, f I, I was consulting, consulting. I was one of the people they interviewed for that. Um, and I think they also interviewed Hotbid and maybe another, maybe a third person. I'm not sure if he made it. And I haven't, I haven't, I don't have Hulu, so I can't watch it yet, but, um, go check that out. And is that it? Oh yeah, questions. All right, so let's get to the questions part. Um, this is questions from um, probably like YouTube chatter or YouTube commenters and stuff like that. So I'll get to those. Uh, question from Mr. Bionicle, Fighter09. Just realized Purge still hasn't done a video on Willow. Will there ever be one? Uh, as soon as I read this question, I felt intense shame because I haven't made one yet. Um, uh, so could kind of talk a little bit about the, the answer, the short answer is yes, I, I should make one and I should have made one already. Uh, basically for Willow, Pangolier, and Monkey King, I kind of dropped the ball big time by not making a video yet. Um, but my personality when I play games usually is I don't really want to use OP stuff because it's kind of annoying. It's like, I don't I don't want to just like abuse OP things. It doesn't fa sound fun. You know, I want to, my, my desire gaming is I want to express myself by trying something that nobody else, like trying to figure out something that other people don't appreciate as a whole, like finding some character that feels OP. Like Morphling, for example, I am so like, excited like i feel uh pride in a in a in a in a um what's the word um um in an ego field way about morphling being op because i i called that i feel like i i felt like he was op i told people he was op i argued on reddit with people that he wasn't dead that he was op even though his win rate dropped this because people don't know how to play heroes. Like, like look at Pangolier and like Pangolier's win rate was crap and he did get some buffs by all means. Um, but he, he was also OP. People just have to figure out why, how to make them OP. And right when a hero comes out, most people have no idea. It, it takes time for the general consensus to understand, oh, X hero can do this role, but not this role. And he's good in these situations. And this is how you play him. It takes a lot of, a lot of time actually for new heroes to, to be figured out. So, um, I felt great about, I, I wanted to, I, I, I was happy that I figured that out, that Morphling was strong in OP before uh, most other players. And I got that video out, even though it was a little bit late, I felt I should have made it faster. I got that video out before the pro scene decided that he was OP, start first round banning him, and then finally the hero gets a nerf. Uh, gets a nerf. So I felt good about that. Um, but that's kind of the stuff that I like doing. And lately, oh yeah, I remember what I forgot. So when I was talking about procrastination earlier, I've been working very heavy in the last year to really try to fix my work related issues in terms of procrastination, like making sure that I'm working enough, that I'm efficient with my day so that I have time off at the end of the day, instead of just kind of sitting around all day being like, I really should be doing some work and getting distracted by Reddit or reading politics related things, which has obviously been a huge uh, interest of mine in the last year because of all the Trump, you know, betraying America kind of shit. But um, maybe I shouldn't have just set it off that hand, that offhand, but but it's true. Um, so basically, I'm trying to become more efficient on that stuff. And one of the no things that I've noticed that wastes my day is that if I play Dota, if I play a Dota game with friends, and that's usually when I most want to play Dota. If, if a friend that I like playing with invites me to a party, I really want to accept and go play Dota. And usually when that happens, I have very little control to not continue pressing find match. Like if that party stays together... I'm going to be there for like six to eight hours sometimes just playing Dota. And if I play Dota all day and don't stream it, that feels like a huge waste. So basically, I've kind of trained myself to be better about not pressing accept as often when my friends invite me, if they invite me, which is good because then I probably spend the time more efficiently, but also bad because then I play less Dota. So part of the problem is that I play less Dota when I'm not streaming now. And that I'm also distracted by other stuff and other interests and hobbies that come up a little. So I just don't play Dota quite as much as I used to. So that's kind of part of the issue is that like I have so many other things that I also have to do, including like taking the dog to the dog park and um, spending time with my girlfriend and um, writing learn Dota videos. Or the first like six months of the year, I was just like super stressed because I would have to spend at least like one to two days a week working on learn Dota or uh, Dan and learns Dota series and lesson plans that took up a lot of my time for the first half of the year. So like all of these things are like really constraining my ability to just casually play Dota because I have more shit going on basically. So that's by, why it's been hard to 
be as reliable with some videos as I did in the past. And that is one, uh, this isn't really related to Willow necessarily, Dark Willow video, um, but that's part of the reason that I just don't play quite as many games and I try not to get as distracted playing them as a result. So a little bit, I, you guys are basically my therapist at this point, but I just wanted to tell you guys why, why what's happening is happening because it's better for me to be transparent, I feel, than to just be like, oh, sorry, I let you down. I'll get there eventually, you know. Um, I, I feel better telling you why. So hopefully it makes you guys less frustrated when I drop the ball. So there will be a Dark Willow video. My current opinion of her is that she is better as a core than as a support. But I did get wrecked by a Dark Willow support last night. It was more of like a dual offlane. Uh, that guy was a very good player. And I got wrecked by him. So maybe I'll watch his games. I My impression is that she is not played much as support by really good players right now just because her damage output is kind of weak like she kind of scales really well she can snowball super super well if she does well um so i kind of feel like um support is maybe a better role for her but she got played a little bit at midas mode as a support but kind of fell off pangolier however seemed to be the bigger stay and i think we'll see a lot more pangolier than dark willow at captain's draft in my personal opinion okay next question uh a white uh, Von Uni on coaching. Hey, Purdue, here's an idea that may help you coach better. As an alternative to reviewing his actions, try to pause often. Predict what you would do on pause, see what he actually did compare, and discuss why his way or your way was better. This way you don't get biased thinking bias thinking his way of doing stuff was the only way. Um, I think this would work if I was watching a player at my level or better than me, but I don't think it works very well by watching players that are at 2K. Because... Like, almost if I did this every like eight seconds for a low level player, they're almost always going to make the wrong decision, and it would probably be pausing too often. I don't think it's a bad idea, but I, I think this would work much better with good players because then I could maybe think why why would I what would I do, and then you can better see like maybe try to figure out why they're doing something different than what I would have done. I think that 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 works better for players better than you if you're trying to figure it out. But if a player is 4,000 MMR lower than me, they're going to make so many mistakes that like they're not even close to doing anything beneficial. Like 1K players, 1K support players do almost nothing right is is pretty safe to say. They might know how to cast their spells, but the way that they affect the trialing is like kind of, it's like they're, there's there's definitely some games where I've coached support players and they actually do nothing but stand in the lane, deny stand there and deny creeps and occasionally like throw a nuke at their opponent, which is almost nothing. So I, I, I get your point and there's definitely times where they'd be good, but um as a whole for people much worse than me it's i don't think it's that worth it it's better to be more direct like you should be doing x and, and not look as much why they played bad it's better to like say like i don't care what you know about dota right now but this is how you're supposed to play if that makes sense rather than look at everything they did wrong every five seconds i think that summarizes it well travis on the patch as someone who's always randomized what do you find is the best way to choose which hero to pick now um generally i, I I've, I've kind of developed my thoughts i still miss randoming Definitely, because I, I. But I think the reason that I liked randoming was, and I realized this recently, is because I don't like having to make the choice, because I get overwhelmed by choice choices sometimes. Like, oh, I'm playing support. Which hero am I going to pick? And I have to sit there and think, like, I could do this hero, I could do this hero, but no, I can't do it for this reason. That kind of stresses me out because I'd, I'd rather just like have the hero be given to me and then I go play the game. Um, so I think that's why I like random liked randoming. Um, right now I kind of like picking one of the daily heroes because we get a mango and because it helps narrow down that field of choice for me a little bit. Um, but I think, uh, I think if you play random draft, you can still random. You can also play the all random game mode. Um, I think that is a good way to random if you want to random. Um, I think there's also websites that people have coded. I think I saved one actually. I saved a link and it, it's a website where you can press the button and it picks a random hero for you. Like I just pressed it and it gave me Dragon Knight. Press the button, it's Shadow Demon. Hypothetically, you could press that button and pick that hero. Would be reasonable. Um, you won't get the gold, obviously, but that would be another way to random. So it's kind of stupid that I have to go to a different website made by a third party to press the random button. But and I but I, I do understand why Valve removed it because it did make a lot of players mad. Uh, at this point, I think my current argument is uh, allow randoming and unranked, I think, except for the last random. Uh, make it like how a randoming was before. Um, I think it's okay to not allow, allow randoming and ranked. But I wish it was still an unranked all pick, personally. I would like that. Um, not that I try to play unranked that much. If, if you play unranked soul, it's really not a good time. It's like everybody wants to play core or try X stupid build that they think is good. 
like Elder Titan mid with a Battle Fury. I played with that guy the other day. He was so worthless. Why didn't he just fight? I don't, I don't get it. He got wrecked. Um, okay, so that answers that question, I think. Um, Baron Chugs on Artifact, PUBG, and other games. Ever thought of creating a separate channel for other game content? Um, I have occasionally made other videos. When I first started making Dota 2 videos, or I should say, when I first started making Dota 1 videos, I made a couple StarCraft 2 videos. Uh, that was a long time ago. Um, Artifact, I will certainly make Artifact videos, without a question. Uh, PUBG, I still play sometimes in free time. Um, I feel I did a PUBG stream one night, but since then, I you know, it's been like months ago. I'm better at PUBG now. I'm not great, but I'm okay, I think. Um, I could do more PUBG streams, um, but I think the it's pretty resource intensive. I don't know if they've optimized it better since then, hopefully, but it's a little bit tough to stream. Um, I definitely could make PUBG videos. Um, other games wise, I don't really play any other games right now. It's basically just PUBG and Dota 2, but I mean, in the last two weeks, I barely played any games. I played games. I didn't play video games, though. We played a lot of board games at my parents' house. We played um, Seven of Wonders a lot. Uh, Seven of Wonders is a really nice like mix between slight complexity, but also easy enough that anybody can learn it. Because the problem is that like if my, my parents got me this board game last year for Christmas, and I had never played it all year. So I brought it with to, uh, and thinking like, oh, there's probably going to be time when I play the board game. We opened it up and looked at it, and it's like really complex. I can't remember what it's called, like Through the Ages or something like that. I th I've heard it was rated really highly in board game. Board Game Geek or something, but I didn't check it out myself. But the game time length was like three hours. And the rule book is like 16 pages long of very detailed stuff. It was like, it's probably what people feel like when they look at my Welcome to Dota You Suck guide. It's like, oh God, there's so much info. But this was a lot of info. I had like a lot of phases and a lot of shit. It's like a, it was it seemed like a really, it was like a more complicated version of Agricola. And Agricola is a game that I don't really reach to being like, yeah, I can't wait to play this. Because to play games like Agricola, you have to find people that want to play complex games like that. So the idea of playing this super complex game with my parents or getting my dad to sit through all the explanation and then play a three-hour game, shit's not going to happen. He likes playing games, but he's not super into games. So a game like Seven Wonder was really nice because it had enough complexity, but it was simple enough that somebody could enjoy it. Um, so we played a lot of Seven Wonders, we played a couple of the board games, we played Codenames a bit, we played uh, Pandemic a little bit, or is that what it's called? Yeah, I think it's called Pandemic. It's like the sickness one, you have to cure the four diseases. We played that two games one night. Basically, uh, my sister's husband is really into board games, and I'm into board games, and Beth and uh, Michelle also played a good amount, so it was a good time. Had a nice time. Uh, played a lot of board games, but basically didn't think about Dota much for like two weeks, or PUBG, so... Uh, yeah, I don't play another, a lot of other games, but I definitely will play Artifact Guaranteed because I, I certainly am craving uh, something interesting that's Dota related. Not saying that Dota is not interesting, but there's no way that I won't play Artifact, I assume. And minimum, I'm going to make a bunch of videos towards the beginning of it to, while I learn it together uh, with you. And if it ends up not being interesting, then I'll probably stop making videos if it sucks. But let's be real, it's probably not going to suck. And uh, I'm definitely excited to make videos, and there's an extremely high chance that I continue making videos. Sorry for that. I'm playing with these bottle cap things because because I have uh, uh, I don't know. I just like touching stuff. All right, Dat Boy uh, on Slacks coaching. Uh, you promised us Slacks purchase coaches purge on techies. Where is it? When did I? I don't remember promising that. Um, Slacks is a better techies than me. Kind of. I would say he is. I would say that if Slax played on my account, he would have a better chance of winning the game than I do, than I would. But I would say there's parts of Techies that I do better than Slax. The parts, because recently I played Techies, I played with Slax, he played Techies, and then the game after I played Techies. And it was like a day that me and him just played pubs all day together off stream. And I noticed that the thing he does really, really well, the thing Slax is best at when he plays Techies that I'm not good at, is I'm not good at setting up remote mind traps where I get kills on cores routinely. I'm bad at that personally. Um, he he focuses a lot more on mind stacking like that, and I try to focus more on pushing lanes, um, being kind of near teammates. Like he, he always goes bloodstone to like power lane mines, but I prefer, I think that going something like um, blink dagger after ags into like a hex is, is better personally. I think that sounds good to me. Um, so there's definitely places he could coach me um, and this is a possibility, but I am not sold it would be a great video anymore, personally. I Because his style, his Dota opinion is very different than mine. And Slax is a very smart guy, but the way that our brains work is very different from one another. So his coaching would be telling me to do things that 
at a Dota level don't always make sense. So I think it would be us butting heads a lot. I'm not sure if it would make a good video, but I can bring it up to him when I see him in two days and maybe maybe it'll happen. We'll see. Uh, Fraudinator on the scam call video. Please make this a series. Purge's humor is just perfect for this kind of thing. Sander, I think leaving the note, this is how frank, fake prank channels was born. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, the scam call video was honestly random, very random. I basically got a call. I realized it was a scammer. I was sitting on my computer and I was like, all I have to do is open Audacity and start recording and hold the phone close to the mic and I can record this, which is what I did. Um, and then Sander edited all the editing and um, you know cut out a couple parts. But um, it's not really something that's easily done. Um, those like scam calls where somebody actually live calls you are much more rare. Usually it's a automated message with some actor that... Um, sounds like they're kind of talking to you and try to get you to but maybe if i went through those calls longer they would talk i would talk to a real person that's probably true but i, I don't want to seek it out uh, technically it's um should i even talk about this i guess it doesn't matter because i sent that tweet where i asked but basically in the state of california it's a dual consent state i think for a recording that for somebody to record your audio both the person that's recording you and the person that's talking to you need to be aware that it's happening that's why, like, when you call your bank or something, it's like, just so you know, this call may be recorded or for for uh, training purposes or something. They have to say that legally so that the other person knows that they're being recorded. So uh, I believe um, technically I shouldn't have even posted the video. That's why I, I had it sitting for a while. I didn't record it. I didn't post it. And then Sandra made the editing and we, we posted it. Basically, the only reason I know that it's probably okay is because that guy's not going to identify who he is and sue me because... He, uh, he's a scammer, you know, uh, but it's definitely not something that I would want to make routine. The only other way you can make that stuff work is that you do stuff like what Jackass did or whatever, where they would basically do pranks in person and people would get really mad. And then the person that they wanted to have on video with their faces, they would go up to them afterwards and they'd be like, Hey, if you sign this contract to consent to your image being shown on our movie, we'll pay you $10,000. And that's how they would get consent for things like that. That way without getting people in on it. So this is not really like my area of expertise at all. Um, it just kind of happened and, uh, it's just going to have to be one of those blips in time. Um, I, I wouldn't want to make it a, a thing. Like like Sanders said, this is how fake, fake prank channels are born. If some, if that's somebody's way to make a lot of money, then they're going to seek out trying to do more pranks in person to try to get interesting videos that give hits because they know they can make thousands of dollars per video. But I don't want to... I'd prefer to a limit to teaching you guys stuff, like teaching-based videos. And maybe there's some like more content in the future that I might branch out on. Like some, I got an idea for something when I was in Wisconsin. I found this... Uh, I was searching, I was looking through this like politics tweet and I saw some guy responding to tweets that had really um, smart tweets, well-written tweets, very smart opinions. And um, I poked around his profile a little bit and I saw this like, basically basically, I got to this point where I found this um, website that he used where uh, he posts some um, responses to things called Quora or something like that. I don't know how much I should say because I feel like this could be weird. But, um, but basically the guy was really, really smart. Uh, definitely way smarter than me and the way he explained things was very straightforward and I thought it was really cool and I thought like hey what if uh, we did some kind of some kind of a project with this guy or asked him you have to ask him first I haven't talked to the guy so don't be weird if you guys figure out who it is but um, I thought it'd be cool to do a project where I made videos with Sander making complicated topics like politics or healthcare or things like that explaining those in a simple way that was uh, something i thought like maybe if i ever wanted to branch out away from video games but still kind of make entertainment videos or learning based entertainment that something politics related would be good because that's probably my number one hobby right now other than dota is politics stuff i've been pretty heavily reading and watching that stuff for like the last two years now year and a half year and a half so uh, that was kind of an idea I had for something different. The only reason I bring this up is because making scam call videos would be like another YouTube shift, but outside of gaming. Uh, but that was something I thought about that I, that I thought was interesting the other day. Because once in a while, like I watch like, you'll watch like an elected congressman, which is basically like a representative in America, somebody that uh, basically does legislature and, and voting and stuff to change how laws work. They make really shitty videos sometimes, like really awful videos. They'll do like a video on Twitter where they're talking to constituents or something, but it's just awkward and there's dead space and they tell bad jokes. Not that you can fix that, but you can change editing or maybe it'll be policy related or like I think generally the people that make video for media campaigns or congressional stuff are basically those campaigns aren't big enough to know how to link up to people that are really good at the job. 
So somebody like me that's kind of like a semi-inexperienced, but I have a lot of experience in the field, could be good to jump in and be like, hey, let's make this video make a lot of sense. I feel like I would be good at doing stuff like that because I have a lot of experience doing that in the last couple of years. So that's basically an idea uh, that I might might hypothetically branch out at some point, but I don't really have the time, um, especially with Artifact coming. So probably won't happen, but had a fun idea about that. And I, I thought maybe that's a way that I'll transition out of eSports someday. Let's go work in politics for video content or educational reasons or something. Maybe. That's only when eSports dies, for the record. Not It's not like a, I want to give up on eSports. It's more like, hey, if Dota 2 dies and Artifact is dead. Do I really want to go make PUBG videos? Probably not. Uh, probably don't want to, maybe, maybe I will, maybe if a game is cool enough or something, but not sure. Maybe it'd be better to switch. Anyways, uh, when will GemTD come back? I have probably haven't played GemTD in like eight months. Uh, maybe, I feel like right now there's too much stuff that I'd want to play. I'd rather make PUBG videos, I guess, than GemTD videos. But maybe once in a while. I think I usually played Gem TD when I was getting a little bored of regular Dota. I think last time I did that, that I got bored of regular Dota, I played Ability Draft heavily. Um, so right now, Ability Draft is my non-Dota Dota, I guess. So I don't know if Gem TD is coming back. We'll see. Maybe there'll be a time when I have the desire, but um, I guess I don't feel like going back and relearning it right now. I'd rather just play Ability Draft or something else. So uh, what what's the future of your cooperation with Day9 after Christmas? Um, so to again categorize what we did this year we started around january i think and we i taught him dota basically ta uh, taught him the framing about understanding how dota is supposed to be played that way he can kind of figure the rest out for himself and he's now kind of branching out into all heroes is kind of what's happening because he feels comfortable enough um the issue is that to continue on that path of lesson plans is i'd have to get more and more obscure into topics that are more specific and that i'm maybe not as much of an expert on um so it kind of got complicated towards the end we've kind of covered it's kind of like if you take a bar and you say like this is all of dota knowledge and i take and i basically like taught them chunks here and there and there's little spaces in between and it's kind of like i did chunks from like the left all the way to the right if i have to go back in and make new lessons and i either have to like break down each chunk farther which is kind of hard to do or i'd have to find the little gaps in between and be like oh i miss these little gaps um so at some point to create new lessons it became difficult to get an idea and even then if i got an idea it'd be hard to make it interesting so not to mention the fact that i was spending way too much time not i wasn't spending too much time but the amount of time that it took to make the the lesson plans was way too much it was just a shitload of time um so basically I, we had to we had to end the official lesson stuff and now basically what happens is we play on wednesdays and go over kind of themes and i teach him stuff a little but it's more like we just play together on wednesdays with a little bit of a theme. So uh, for now, that is ongoing. I do not know how long it will last. Um, generally, the show will just not happen if I have something going on, which seems to happen more often than he has something going on. So it kind of happens sporadically, but basically we will play together on Wednesdays if we are both home and nobody is sick is pretty much what's happening. So if you guys wanna watch us hang out and play games, you can always be there on Wednesdays. We always start on his channel and go to mine. Um, but again, I'm not gonna be here on Wednesday because I'm flying out in two days on monday tuesday flying out on tuesday so i'll miss wednesday this wednesday so um yeah we'll see what happens don't know how long it'll be but i do enjoy playing with him and we'll keep it going for as long as long as it takes until something else comes up that he has to schedule maybe he'll get like he does so many so many shows so many different games and shows i imagine it'll could be very uh very interesting to see where he goes in the future maybe i'll get canceled someday i don't know don't know so we'll see but i definitely enjoy doing it all right uh so that's all the questions that sander grabbed those are probably all youtube comments sorry to the patreons that i didn't grab comments for but this is kind of last minute and considering the fact that i'm leaving in two days i don't really have time to solicit questions and do the vlog in fact i'm going to start a stream right now uh this is probably too late for you watching this because the video is probably coming out the day after but doing a stream and that should hopefully give me some YouTube videos to make for the next week while I'm gone at Captain's Draft. Or you could just tune into Captain's Draft. If you want to watch Captain's Draft, go to twitch.tv slash moonducktv and uh, you can watch the tournament. I'm going to be there. I'll probably be paneling, doing a little bit of casting, hopefully not too much because I think I'm much better at as a panelist. And uh, lots, of other, uh, lots of the other Moonduck faces you love. Uh, it's a minor. It's a lot of good teams going. And I think that's all. I think I pretty much, that's that's the update to my life. I definitely gave you guys just about everything here. Uh, 
and that's it i guess last little plug i suppose um i guess to eh. this is politics related that's why i'm a little bit unsure of myself um there's a lot of crazy stuff going on in american politics right now just because um the guy that got elected is a con man buffoon and i definitely said this leading up to the election and around the time that it happened um but uh yeah our leadership is not so good in america right now but it's only a matter of time until his uh the charges against him come through um if you guys don't know what's going on intimately uh you can watch some you can go to some mainstream news channels they will generally be kind of updating you on how things are going but I, I find that the most interesting person to watch right now is Seth Abramson. Abram, how do you spell his name? Uh, basically, he's this dude, Abramson. He, um, his Twitter bio says he's an attorney and he's a professor of both journalism and legal advocacy. He says he used to be a uh, criminal prosecutor. But basically, he does these really, really long write-ups about detailed breaking information about the news that's going on so it could be something like oh there's a big article that hits and he'll tweet like 100 tweets about it saying why it's important and what it has to mean so the reason following him following people like that is important i think is uh, to get the accurate news is because um they can go very deep on their opinions so if you guys want to know what's going on with the trump russia investigation i think he's the best follow um he is extremely uh credible seeming um and the only reason I'm talking about it now is because uh, I feel a slight obligation to share good things when I see them because I'm like, hey, this person does something that's really interesting and good. And I think that's the case. So I want to vouch for him. So I'm just telling you guys because I would rather tell you in this vlog than uh, retweet him, I guess, or tweet about it because I think that's a little bit too invasive to share with you guys. So uh, if you guys want to go give him a follow, I'd recommend it. Go read some of his tweets, read his uh, likes. His likes are usually like, um, kind of like a bookmark for himself for some of his bigger things that he's written recently and uh, that's about it I just thought I'd communicate that because I spent a bunch of time today reading a bunch of his uh, threads that were very interesting talking about how things are developing so it's a good way to get hope in this big mess of like uh, despair that often happens with the way things are kind of going sometimes and the illegal things that are and uh, un-American things that are happening so I just thought I'd share that because I guess I'd pay attention to politics too much. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching the vlog. And I will hopefully see you in about a month. Fingers crossed. I will do a better job. I, I You know, I shouldn't even say that. I can't even promise I will do a better job. But I can promise you I will try to do a better job. And if I don't, I will feel very bad about it. Guaranteed. I, that's a guarantee. 100% guaranteed I'll feel bad. All right. Uh, see you guys later. I'm going to go start the stream. Have a good day. Come